What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. I am still out here playing battles on this dead game because, you know, I have a fun time doing it. Plus it makes it feel like it's 2009 again. I'm still out here creating the same content, you know, a thousand years later doing kind of the same thing. And I just have a fun time doing these Wi-Fi battles. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy watching. If you do, leave a like on the video, leave a comment, let me know. Um, but I do appreciate the support. I'm always going to be doing this stuff, you know, as long as I have fun doing it. So, we out here. So, as you saw, I'm using my kind of weird team full of shenanigans with like the half hail stuff going on. As my opponent actually kind of has a cool team as well. It's like, it, it's weird because it's got, you know, half weird shit like this Arbok. And then there's, you know, some big powerful threats like things like Starmie. He's got like a Sceptile over there. Uh, in general, this is looking like a pretty fun matchup. So, I am leading off with my Abama Snow. Uh, I want to get the hail up, plus, you know, you can never, it's never too early to get some frosted mini wheats in you. It's a, it's a well balanced breakfast. But, uh, I do not like the snake, as, you know, I'm expecting potentially like a gunk shot. This thing could start setting up coils. I don't know, man, it's an Arbok. These things are never around. But it does actually end up going for a glare, as I'm able to switch into Sand Slash, kind of expecting to be able to tank any hit. But now, my ground type is paralyzed, and that's like, you know, one of the only ways to do it. Um, not paralyzed through electricity, but instead of fear, so I guess that's how it makes sense. But, um, you know, Sand Slash obviously has a good matchup here, and this kind of opens the door for me to be able to get up some Stealth Rock. I'm thinking I'm probably going to need some, you know, hazard support to be able to limit some switches, because um, my, my team kind of needs all the help it can get, you know, in terms of uh, damage and stuff. So, uh, he's actually going to switch directly into the Sceptile, as I do get up the Stealth Rock, no paralysis for me. And uh, Sceptile is a very scary Pokemon for my team. Um, I'm going to have to play around this thing very carefully. It's faster than everything I have except for um, my secret weapon in the back, which is the Choice Scarfed Mr. Mime. Um, but I obviously don't want to leave Sand Slash in here. It's kind of good support for things like that Arbok. Uh, so I'm actually going to switch directly into uh, the Mini Wheat. I say, you know what, I want seconds. Breakfast is back, bitch. And he actually ends up predicting that going for a Focus Blast and actually misses, so, you know, Focus Miss doing its thing, and, you know, good prediction on his end, but I got lucky there, so, um, I know that I can take at least one Focus Blast, uh, mostly because I am Focus Sashed, but I'm gonna pretend like I knew I was gonna live that shit with 15 HP, and I look like a genius, so I'm able to, uh, get up my Aurora Veil. If you're unfamiliar, Aurora Veil is essentially just like a, a Reflect and a Light Screen all in one, as long as I have the Hail up. I can set that up, but it actually lasts, you know, the, the ordinary amount of turns even when the hail goes away. So, now I decided to just go for the Ice Shard. I would like to get some damage off on the Sceptile if possible. Uh, but he actually ends up switching into the Starmie. Now here is where an interesting play uh, is kind of opened up here. As I go for the Ice Shard, obviously, you know, not going to do much here. But, I know that he brings in the Starmie because he wants to get up the Rapid Spin. Now my dudes are probably thinking he could probably just kill me with the Rapid Spin get rid of the Stealth Rocks, and get a speed boost in the process. But I say, I think I can live that through the Aurora Veil. So he does go for the Rapid Spin. Gets rid of the Stealth Rock, but I'm able to live it with 6 HP, which is amazing. And now this opens up uh, the opportunity for me to absolutely smash the shit out of my dude with a fucking hammer. And uh, that dude just got squished like a spider in the corner of your room. And Starmie is no longer a threat anymore, which is great because honestly, I was kind of worried about Starmie. You know, it's, it's a super fast... Uh, threat that's got a lot of coverage and uh, can just be a real problem to my squad. So easy, easy kill there. Um, he did get rid of the Stealth Rock, kind of traded Stealth Rock for uh, the Starmie, which in my mind is is a dub. Although I do end up losing the uh, the Obama Snow there, and that kind of sucks because Obama Snow was one of my answers to Subtile. Uh, I would have really liked to have Ice Shard support against that thing if I could whittle it down, but. Uh, anyway, there was an empty battlefield. We both decide to switch into something. I decide to go into the big blubberous whale as he ends up going into, a, a, again, a different blubberous bastard, which is the, the mammoth swine. So, a couple of fat boys on the field here. I end up going for the waterfall there. Um, and I'm thinking, now I'm going to go for the ice fang in case I can potentially uh, catch the septile coming in on a switch. And I'm thinking maybe Ice Shard should, should be able to kill anyway. But then, you know, thick fat mammoth swine is obviously going to live that. And that is... You know, definitely a misplay on my end, but in my eyes, it was kind of worth it to uh, try to predict that if I could get, you know, that prediction correct. It was kind of, it outweighed the cons. So, now I just decided to go for a waterfall here uh, as he earthquakes and, you know, Bubba's being, is able to take that even without the Aurora Veil. Uh, the Veil did go away, which, you know, wasn't super helpful, 
Uh, this team is kind of set up to have that Aurora Veil support for some of the weaker sweepers to be able to uh, tank some more hits, but uh, Bob is sitting at half health, and uh, I am, am able to at least take care of the Mamoswine, which, you know, is nice. And now another huge threat comes in, which is the freaking Arcanine. So, uh, depending on what type of build this thing is, it's probably just offensive with close combat. I decided it's probably not worth it for me to try to switch out here. Um, and he does go for the close combat, which, you know, takes care of me. Absolutely clubs the shit out of my large seal. And, uh, sir, you're under arrest. Because Bubba did not deserve that shit, man. But that's pretty much fine, as Walrein, you know, didn't look too great for the rest of this matchup anyway. Uh, and now this opens up the door for a free switch in. So, I decide to go into the Rotom here. I'm thinking, you know, I could probably scare this thing out. Uh, with the threat of like a Thunderbolt. So I'm actually going to end up going for a Volt Switch, really trying to gain some momentum, just with the fact that my team does not deal uh, with theirs super well. Um, I'm trying to make predictions here to try to get some momentum on my side, as Volt Switch does not end up killing this thing, which is quite unfortunate. He stays in. I thought potentially I could maybe get Sceptile to come in and resist the electric, but, you know, of course not. That damn Sceptile is, uh, <laughs> is like, he's playing mind games and it's not even on the damn field, but... Uh, I go into the Sand Slash here. It was, it was worth it for me to go for that Volt Switch because I can always just bring in the Sand Slash. Um, but he ends up going for the Flare Blitz, of course. Now, it doesn't quite knock me out, but it kind of, you know, renders Sand Slash useless as luckily, at least, it knocks itself out in recoil. So, at least Arcanine is gone and dealt with, um, although now Sand Slash, even though, you know, Sand Slash was really only good for the Electrode, he still has the Sceptile, uh, which, you know, is able, able to take care of this thing, you know, no problem. So... Um, I don't really have the opportunity to switch here. I mean, I could try to make some stuff happen, but I'm thinking it's probably more worth it to, for me uh, to just let Sand Slash go down, as I do kind of have an answer uh, for that Electrode in the back anyway. Uh, but this thing finishes me off with the Giga Drain, which you hate to see, because I really need this thing whittled down like as much as possible uh, to be able to put it in range to take it out. Uh, but it's just out here just sucking the health out of my Sand Slash, so fuck you, guy. But now I'm going to bring in the absolute demon that is Mr. Mime. The old housewife out here is Choice Scarf, so I'm able to outspeed. And this is my kind of like secret weapon here, as nobody expects this thing to be able to outspeed stuff. And then all of a sudden, boom, Choice Scarf, Mr. Mime is absolutely fucking your wife. So he goes into the Arbok here, as I just go for the Stab of Psychic. Um, it was kind of the play regardless, but obviously Arbok is not going to enjoy that. And that takes care of the snake, so... Now it's down to, I believe it's just the Electrode and the Sceptile. So we've got a winnable match here as long as I can play my cards right. So Electrode comes in. Um, I'm thinking I probably don't want to reveal that I'm Scarf yet. Plus I don't think a Psychic is going to be able to knock this thing out in one hit. Uh, and I've got some some Mons to, to play around with, aka, you know, just, you know, the Devil. So uh, Jump Bluff I know is a Mon that can take a few Thunderbolts from this thing. You know, Electrode has a very shallow move pool plus. Uh, BDSP was, did, did not do well for, uh, this thing in general, but, uh, Thunderbolt does a little bit too much, and unfortunately, one more is gonna be able to knock me out. I think that might be Choice Specs damage, um, but I'm not actually sure. But, anyway, Jump Left goes down, and now I can freely switch into Rotom, who should be able to take a Thunderbolt and hit this thing hard, uh, with a Shadow Ball in return. All I really need it to do is knock it to, uh, range where Mr. Mime can then kill, so... Uh, I go for the Shadow Ball here, the you know, old Pinhead Larry is going to be able to take a Thunderbolt. And again, I'm, I'm glad to be out here representing base form Rotom, because like I said before, Pinhead, you don't have to change into anything to be acceptable to me, man. I don't care if you're a lawnmower, a fridge, or a fucking calculator, you, you're great to me just as your normal pointy self. But, uh, one more Thunderbolt is going to take care of Rotom, but Pinhead did what he needed to do, and that was whittle Electro down to where Mr. Mime can come in and surprise the shit out of my dude by outspeeding, and it all comes down to whether or not Housewife can win the matchup against the Sceptile. Uh, so, Mr. Mime comes in, feet pointy as shit, curly as hell, ready to do some stuff, and run fast. So, <laughs> uh, I go for the Psychic, it's just gonna be able to do the most damage here, and I do outspeed the Electrode, which this thing was probably like, what in the hell, I'm... I did not expect that, and it, that's, that's the fun of, uh, Choice Scarf, Mr. Mime. So now his last Pokemon is going to be that Sceptile. So Sceptile comes in, and it's looking like it's close to being in range for Psychic to kill. And I could maybe live an attack depending on what this thing wants to do. Let's see what happens. I go for the Psychic, and Sceptile is unfortunately going to be able to live that as I expected. But it comes down to, is he going to Giga Drain? Nope. He goes for the Leaf Storm. And that is going to take care of Mr. Mime. So Mime goes down. 
and there goes in all my hope. But Life Orb puts this thing into red, and that was a very close game, one to zero, as I was almost able to take care of that damn Sceptile. Uh, in hindsight, I could have probably switched into Rotom on the turn that the uh, the Starmie was going for Rapid Spin. I think that would have gave me a lot more momentum, plus I would have still had the Obama Snow for the Ice Shard, and in general, you know, misplays happen in the moment, you're not really thinking. Uh, that far ahead. I, I think the Ice Shard would have would have allowed me to be able to beat the Sceptile. But, you know, that's sometimes the way she goes. Wi-Fi battles are, are a bitch sometimes. But still, always fun regardless. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.